Good afternoon, everyone. We're coming on the air because Hurricane Ian is about to make landfall along Florida's southwest coast. Let's take you right to the satellite. You can see the size and scope of this hurricane just off the coast there, right off the coast of Fort Myers, Naples, Sarasota, as you can see, feeling the brunt of this already. Uh, severe impacts already. Life-threatening storm now. A very strong Category 4 hurricane. Winds up to 155 miles per hour. Now that puts it just below a Category 5 hurricane, of course, Cat 5, 157 or more. This is hovering just beneath the Cat 5. Of course, they always look back at the path once it makes landfall. It could get upgraded much later. But this is the strongest September hurricane, nonetheless, in two decades to hit the western coast of Florida. The storm threatening to cause catastrophic damage with a storm surge forecast of up to 18 feet in some places. 18 feet of seawater expected to come ashore. That upgrade overnight into this morning, record storm surge of nearly five feet already reported in Naples. We've seen the images coming in, cars almost entirely submerged in water. Parts of the state have been feeling the impact for hours already. The outer bands hitting with heavy wind and rain. There are reports of flooding in Fort Myers Beach. Power has been knocked out to more than 265,000 customers across Florida already, and this is just the beginning. Utility crews from 23 states have been called in. They'll be ready to go. Roughly 2.5 million Floridians have already been told to evacuate so many, heeding uh, those warnings. The mayor of St. Petersburg has warned those choosing to stay that the city's first responders will not be coming to help while there are tropical force winds, of course, hurricane force winds once this makes landfall. We hear that message every time a hurricane hits. It's simply too dangerous for rescue teams to go out in the middle of these hurricanes. Amid the ferocious winds, torrential downpours and the flooding, there are also tornado warnings in effect. We've seen images already of those funnel clouds. Airports across the region shutting down. More than 2,000 flights have been canceled already today. Airports not in the storm zone will feel the ripple effects of this. We'll see this across the country, in fact. At this hour, the White House says President Biden has spoken with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. The president urging residents not to take anything for granted and evacuate when ordered. Of course, that time is now quickly running out, if not past, in so many of these areas that will truly feel the brunt of this storm, uh, the highest impacts as it's approaching landfall right there in the Fort Myers area. We have our team on the ground across Florida. Our chief meteorologist, Ginger Z, she's live in Fort Myers. And Ginger, you've been reporting in all morning long and early afternoon. You're seeing the effects clearly behind you there. David, we are in the eye wall of Hurricane Ian. That is the strongest part of the storm. You can see almost nothing behind me, but if you could, the eye is only about five miles to my west. Look at what's happening right here. We finally saw the wind start to shift, and we've got the surge starting to take over the pool here at our hotel. If you look a little further, there was a dock, and there's a little house at the end of that dock that has been surrounded by the water. Surge here anticipated anywhere from 12 to even 18 feet. That's the type that takes cars, takes homes. It is not just life threatening, it is not survivable. So you do not want to be out there, obviously. It's the wind as well. We've seen gusts in Naples up to 112 miles per hour. And now I really need to show you where this thing is moving because it is so beyond just Sanibel and Fort Myers here. We're going to see a Category 4 hurricane make landfall any moment. We could see Captiva on the radar right through there. Those whipping winds reach all the way up to Jacksonville now with those outer bands. But that extreme wind warning where you can see sustained winds for 115 miles per hour, that's for Inglewood, Boca Grande there, Rotunda West. And look at Tornado Watch that includes Orlando, Miami, West Palm. Everyone there needs to watch as those winds and that friction spin up little tornadoes. Now, let me also mention that the path, which we know well now, is going to cut right across Florida. It will get too close for comfort to Bradenton and Sarasota. The north side of this eye wall is ugly, and it will have a lot of wind, and you've already seen that anti-surge coming out of Tampa Bay. It'll exit the peninsula and then eventually turn back towards South Carolina. A 12 to 18 foot surge, though, in the immediate, that's our concern here. We are really high, David. We're about five stories up, so we've got plenty of clearance. Um, we've got a really great building, a fortress that's keeping us safe. But I am unfortunately beginning to see pieces of houses, siding, and a lot of debris in the water. And this is really just the beginning. David. We can't uh, underscore what Ginger said enough for our team there. They are well above that expected storm surge. Uh, Ginger, talk to us a little bit about the speed of this hurricane, how it's really slowed down, 
And even as it makes landfall, it's going to be churning over Florida really for a very long time. Ever since it left Cuba, it had kind of this north at 10 miles per hour, then northeast at 10 and 9. Now when it gets closer to land, that does slow it down. A lot of things slow it down. One other thing that it ran into, why it stayed so strong, 85 to 90 plus degree waters. But we will see that slow down as it chugs over Florida the next 24 to 48 hours. And that is going to mean 15 to 25 inches of rain in a swath that encompasses a place like Interstate 4, a huge thoroughfare in this state. We are going to see flash flooding. And David, after storm surge, which kills the most people in these storms, is flash flooding. So the most loss of life and property is to water, both inland flooding and right here at the coast. As you mentioned that, we could see the forecast just to your right there on that graphic there, Ginger, up to 25 inches of rain possible in some places. That's an extraordinary number. Ginger, uh, stay safe. We appreciate the excellent reporting for days now on this. We'll come back to you in it. just a moment. Uh, we're getting word from uh, Sarasota County right now. The conditions have changed so rapidly that they have now revealed to the people there of Sarasota County emergency vehicles are no longer responding to calls in Sarasota County and it's simply not safe on the roads uh, any longer. And as you heard Ginger say, they've already had wind gusts up to 107 miles per hour in Sanibel Island, 112 miles per hour in Naples. Let's get right to Victor Akendo. He's live in Fort Myers. He's witnessing this uh, firsthand already uh, as well. Hey, Victor. Hey, David, these are by far the strongest winds that we have felt all day. We've been watching the conditions deteriorate. Nothing compared to what we're feeling right now. I'm sure you can hear it. Just take a look outside our balcony here. The surf, it is just kicking right up. That was the pool level. Can't even make it out right now. And the palm trees are just being whipped around by these incredibly powerful winds. I don't know if you can make it out, but there is a large white boat. It's about 45 feet long, and it's clearly coming detached from the dock. It started pretty close to the building that was behind me. That's where it was docked earlier. Now it's whipped around in the other direction, and in a matter of time here, we're expecting it to eventually get washed away. We've also seen cars flooded and getting spun around in all of this. David, I've been through a, a number of hurricanes. As a native Floridian, Ian is as powerful as anything I've felt. Victor, stay with us here. Uh, describe in that area, again, you're not far from where Ginger Z is, but what they have been telling people as far as what to expect when it comes to potential storm surge, that number increased overnight when they saw that this uh, hurricane was only strengthening. Again, as we're on the air here, expecting landfall any time now, but as you can see, uh, that makes no difference as far as impact already being felt right there in Fort Myers. Victor, what are they expecting as far as storm surge? Because again, they always say this is what you simply cannot survive once you get to storm surge. Certainly 10, 12, up to 18 feet in some places the predicted. And that's what we're seeing happen right now, right behind us here, David. The storm surge, it has just been unbelievable to watch. That news went from bad to worse for the residents here in the Fort Myers and Cape Coral area because Originally, it was just a few days ago, the track had the storm going to the north. Then they woke up yesterday and saw that it had shifted and they had to scramble to start preparing. We were there, we were speaking with locals as they were buying those uh, pieces of plywood at the last minute, fueling up, buying those groceries. It's, it, they just didn't have a ton of time to prepare for this one. So right now, for anyone who's hunkering down and riding this one out at home, the best advice I have for them is to stay put because Take a look behind me. There is no way that any first responder can get to you right now. Victor Akendo repeating what we've heard from authorities. Victor, thank you. We'll come back to you as soon as uh, you flag the camera there for us to come back to you. Again, Victor saying what we've heard from authorities all, all morning long and certainly now with greater clarity early this afternoon uh, that uh, emergency crews simply will not be going out any more into this. Uh, that according to uh, authorities in Sarasota, but that's being echoed throughout the region right there along the western coast of Florida, anywhere near uh, Fort Myers, of course, uh, St. Petersburg. Uh, Victor mentioned Tampa uh, was in the direct uh, crosshairs of this, though this storm is now slightly south of there. Doesn't mean Tampa won't feel this. They are feeling this as well uh, at this hour. Let's get right next to senior meteorologist Rob Marciano. He's live in St. Petersburg for us. Uh, Rob, what are you seeing there? We're seeing uh, consistent winter rain. I mean, it's coming down sheets and sideways, David. Uh, you know, we're...
you know, less, not even 100 miles from the center of this thing. That's how far we are away, and we are getting near hurricane force winds now. And you mentioned the uh, the reverse surge or anti surge that Tampa Bay is getting here in St. Petersburg. You know, we're about 30 miles southwest of Tampa itself, and that's the direction this wind is coming from. And this water, about two or three hours ago, was a good 10 to 12 feet below the seawall. Or, sorry, it was 10 to 12 feet higher than it is now. And now the, the, the bottom of the bay is being exposed. You can see the massive St. Petersburg Pier out there. Uh, they're taking the brunt of this storm. That's not going anywhere. But this water is because it's just being shoved out to sea. And there will be some bay surge or there will be some areas that jut out from, from, the, uh, from the bay. And, and those homes will still get flooded. That's why there are surge warnings as far north as north of St. Petersburg, because depending on the way the coastline is situated, those houses will get flooded and they've been ordered to evacuate. And obviously it's too late to do that right now. Amazing how strong this storm is this far away from the center. The northwest quadrant is not always that, that strong a part of the storm, but in this one, it is. It might even be stronger than the southeastern and eastern half of this storm. So there's no such good thing as a good side to this storm, David. Both sides are equally strong. And because it's moving so slowly, it will be just as punishing in Sarasota, in Bradenton, in St. Petersburg, in Tampa, and eventually Orlando, as it is, is right now across parts of southwest Florida, David. Rob, stick with us here because you and I have talked a lot about this uh, on World News. Ginger touched on it there just moments ago. Uh, the sheer temperature of the waters that this storm has traveled over in the Gulf, 90 degrees and more, extraordinarily warm, fueling the uh, rapid intensification that we saw. And this storm, as we're on the air, is just below Category 5, 155 miles per hour. Really, the designation means nothing when you're that close to being a Category 5 storm, Rob. It is, and it's been remarkable to see this intensification process. Uh, really, the, the late night and through early this morning, had that happen. 85 to 86, 87, 88 degrees, that those water temperatures, about two degrees above average. So we know that climate change is playing a role in kind of supercharging these storms that do get going. We're, we're seeing less in the way of storms develop because the ocean is warm and the atmosphere is warmer. But the ones that are able to develop in the right conditions with a little shear, and this one has a little shear, boom, we get this explosion in growth and strength. And boy, we, we thought we were going to luck out this year, didn't we? I mean, we had a pretty good run there of very quiet times for over two months. Uh, but then, you know, the second half of hurricane season hit and the waters are warm and the and atmospheric conditions uh, cooperated enough to let this one develop into where it is. And, and here we are with this. And the only thing that's really going to slow it down as far as the strength is concerned, I think, at this point, David, is one, if it coming on shore and the land taking a little bit of the punch out of it, very little of the punch out of it, I think over Orlando tomorrow, it's still going to be a Category 1 hurricane. Or it stalls even more and churns off the coast and a little bit of upwelling and it'll start to weaken that way. But that's not good because that just means we get more of this. So it's a, it's a no-win situation here, David. We just got to bear down and get through it. Unfortunately, it's going to take another 24 hours to do that or more for the entire state here, David. All those scenarios that you lay out uh, are still possible at this point, of course. Rob Marciano, our thanks to you. We'll be coming back uh, to you throughout the afternoon here. I want to go back live to these pictures from Fort Myers because what you're seeing right now is exactly what Ginger and Rob had forecasted. These are the initial um, bands and power of this hurricane as it... Uh, prepares to make landfall on the western coast of Florida. The storm surge being reported already. The hotel pools completely vanished underneath the water. We've seen the images coming in of cars in those uh, streets completely flooded. Only the rooftops of the cars now visible in many of these communities uh, hardest hit by this hurricane coming ashore. As Rob mentioned, they're moving very slow or very little shear left for this hurricane, uh, with the exception of once it starts to make landfall, perhaps the land and the structures themselves. But as Ginger mentioned, it's going to be traveling very slowly as it makes its way across Florida. So let's bring back in our chief meteorologist, Ginger Z, just to remind everyone, not only is it the storm surge you're concerned about, Ginger, but once this makes its way over land, 
Uh, as Rob just said, this still has the potential to be a Category 1 hurricane traveling over the highly populated Orlando and surrounding areas. Yes, and that's an, a big issue because it is not just that brunt of the storm when it first comes on shore. Uh, this landfall is imminent. We should see it. And I want to take you with me real quick and just come over the ledge because even in the last couple of minutes till, since I spoke to you last, we've watched the dock that's covered in water unravel and pieces of it floating through the ocean. That little house that's right there is almost going to go because once that water gets up a little higher on there, you can twist these off their foundation. We have seen it before just four years ago when I was talking to you all from Hurricane Michael. We watched the exact same thing. The power of this water is insane. It is unreal to watch. It's as as unreal as the wind and David that imminent landfall should be at 155 mile per hour plus. If it is, this would be only the fifth storm in our recorded history to do so. The 1935 Labor Day storm. Camille, Andrew, Michael, and now Ian. And I remember David. well standing in Michael with you, Ginger, uh, and you saw those houses literally float past you while we were on the air. Uh, yes. Again, facing the potential of a hurricane very close to that size. We're seeing, I believe, transformers, electrical power lines uh, in the images just next to Ginger there. We always see that in storms of this scope and of this nature. Uh, we're seeing it already. Ginger, please stay safe. Glad to see that you're on that balcony and surrounded by uh, very heavy walls there. Ginger, our thanks to you. Let's yes, take it to are. Janae Norman. You heard both Ginger and Rob warn uh, what this could bring inland once it makes its way to Orlando. And you're in Orlando, uh, Janae, and they've taken uh, real precautions there because they know it's on its way. They absolutely have, David. You know, this is a big tourist destination. We've got the, the famed theme parks here, and all of those theme parks announced that they are closing. They are closed today and tomorrow as this area does prepare for Hurricane Ian. I spoke with Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer about the preparations, and he says the biggest concerns here in Orlando because of the track of that storm really coming right over this area is going to be flooding and wind damage. So, so he told me that in preparation, local officials have lowered the levels of many of the area lakes ahead of all all of that anticipated rainfall that should be starting uh, in, in just a little bit here. And he also told me that garbage collection was a big part of their preparations. That's to try to make sure that there isn't extra things around that could become debris, that could become projectiles in those hurricane force winds. Local schools have closed, many of them, for the rest of the week. And, and I asked Mayor Dyer, you know, in Florida, they get these storms. How do you make sure that folks are taking this seriously and really preparing ahead of this storm? He said, we're fortunate that with this one, this is the first storm of the season. He said usually it's when, when there have been multiple storms. Think back to 2004, back to back to back storms. He said because this is the first one, people tend to take it more seriously, and that's what he's been seeing. People really preparing, some already in parts of this area, heading out to shelters, trying to buckle down, get where they need to be before all of that weather moves up here later this evening, David. All right, Janine Norman, our thanks to you as well. Let's bring it to Gio Benitez, who is live in Tampa, and as we know for some time uh, early on, the track showed it uh, making a direct hit to Tampa. It has moved uh, steadily southward from there. It doesn't mean Tampa won't feel this. Uh, Geo is in Tampa, and of course, Geo, you can uh, fill us in on how they prepared in Tampa and also the ripple effects we're seeing already. You covered transportation as well for us. We know many of the airports are shutting down. Absolutely, David. Just about every airport in this region has shut down or have, certainly there are no planes in the air, even if those airports are open. We are starting to feel that blowing rain right now, David, and it's the sheer size of the storm. That is what makes it all so different because this is going to be an all day event for so much of Florida because it's not just the size of the storm itself. But when you look at that eye, usually when we look at an eye as a native Floridian, we know this, David, uh, when you look at that eye, uh, you're typically thinking, well, maybe if it makes landfall in this particular town or this city, that's where it's going to be worse. In this case, you're talking about an eye that spans some 40 miles, a, a huge amount of the Florida Gulf Coast. And so, so many towns will be affected by this. Uh, folks here in Tampa have prepared. Uh, they certainly heeded those warnings yesterday. We saw them evacuate uh, this morning, early this morning, sort of the last moments to evacuate. Uh, we were driving around on the streets and we saw 
saw there was nobody on the road. People were paying attention and listening because they saw this storm and they saw something is very different with Hurricane Ian. And of course, as it makes landfall now, we are seeing that eye right there. Uh, and it is just a massive, massive eye that's going to be making landfall here, David. Gio Benita is also part of our team right there in Florida as Hurricane Ian makes landfall early this afternoon in Florida. Of course, we haven't uh, received that officially yet, but you can see that as it gets this close to shore, it doesn't matter whether the official landfall is taking place or not. The severe impacts already being felt. If we look at those live pictures from Fort Myers, you can see those warnings uh, of storm surge that were possible are being seen already. The water uh, covering those pools, those uh, resort areas, as well as streets, cars, uh, uh, almost uh, disappearing under the water in some places. And joining us as we look at these pictures from the National Hurricane Center is Michael Brennan, the acting deputy director at NOAA. Uh, and Michael, you have been warning of the strength, the scope of this hurricane for days now. It is now on Florida's doorstep. What worries you most? Well, right now we're concerned with that eye wall moving on shore here near Sanibel, Captiva Island, Lee County, Charlotte County. Those are the very worst conditions that are now moving on shore with those you know, potentially catastrophic wind damage, those winds of 155 miles per hour. And we're seeing that storm surge, that push, essentially the winds of Ian pushing the Gulf of Mexico over land here in places like Fort Myers up the Caloosahatchee River into Charlotte Harbor. And that's that you know, catastrophic storm surge where you can see water levels of as high as 18 feet above ground level. So this is really a not a survivable situation for people who are left in those evacuation areas. Hopefully everybody's gotten out up till now. Between the, the wind and the storm surge is a very deadly situation unfolding. Yeah, Michael, put that into perspective for us. When you say 18 feet, possible of storm surge here. We're talking about seawater coming in and inundating those communities. And as you mentioned, that is not a survivable situation. That's right. Yeah, you can think about it. I'm standing here. I'm six feet tall. So that's water that's like two to three times above my head. And that's in that area here from Inglewood down to Bonita Beach. And you can even see down south in Naples, we can see seeing storm surge inundation of eight to 12 feet. And uh, so, we're, you know, the west coast of Florida is so sensitive to storm surge that Gulf water gets pushed quite far inland. So not just right along the immediate barrier islands, but well inland into these canals and creeks and, and harbors where people have homes and businesses and everything else. So very concerned about that today. And that's that's going to be an unfolding uh, unfolding problem. Any idea, Michael, when you'll declare whether or not this uh, this has actually made landfall? Well, it's on its way. We usually the landfall really means that the center of the eye has crossed the coast and you can see the eye walls moving on shore. We still have the center about 45 miles off the coast, maybe 30 to 40 miles off the coast here or south of southwest of Punta Gorda. So, you know, over the next few hours, we'll see that storm as it's moving north, what, north, northeast at about nine. We'll see that center gradually move on shore, but the, the eye will tend to wobble around a little bit. It might slow down. It might speed up. So it's not always a steady motion, but it doesn't really matter. Those conditions are now occurring on land and that's what's uh, affecting people there. Stick with us here, Michael. One more question for you. I know your, your time is very valuable here and I really do appreciate this. As you point out, these communities, Punta Gorda, Fort Myers, Naples, uh, Boca Grande, they're about to feel the real brunt of this hurricane as it makes landfall uh, imminently. Once you get past making landfall, Michael, you've also been talking about this, how long this is going to be over the state of Florida and inland, how the impact will be uh, severe as well. Right, yeah, we're going to see uh, Ian take a slow northeastward motion across the state of Florida and it move near the Orlando area and then offshore of the east coast as we get into Thursday evening. So we're talking about it not moving off the coast until tomorrow evening. And then it's going to turn northward and affect Georgia and South Carolina. So we're expecting widespread impacts. We have a hurricane warning in effect along the Florida east coast in Brevard County, the Melbourne area, the Space Coast up to Daytona Beach area. And the big threat is going to be inland heavy rain. This area in red to the north of the track of Ian Center could see widespread rainfall totals of 10 to 15 inches, isolated totals as high as two feet of rainfall uh, across central and northern Florida, places like Tampa, Orlando, Jacksonville, uh, St. Augustine, Daytona Beach. This could lead to catastrophic freshwater flooding. So flooding due to rainfall in these areas, and that's going to play out over the next couple of days. That's just extraordinary. Michael Brennan will heed the warning. Uh, looking forward to talking with you later on World News Tonight, if that's possible for you. Michael, thank you. The acting director, deputy director there at NOAA, uh, bringing us up to speed. I want to go back to Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z in Fort Myers, because, Ginger, you're witnessing it uh, move in even closer, and you're seeing exactly what you thought you would see at this time.
That wind has shifted, David. We're watching that little house we've been watching the whole time rock on its foundation. I anticipate that comes off any second. All of our ears just popped. That means that the pressure has bottomed out. The pool below us is gone. When we started this special report, you could see the pool. Everything is changing so rapidly. The pieces of debris are getting bigger in the water. That means that things all around us are getting ripped up. We're hearing reports of potential buildings that have been missing now on Fort Myers Beach. We have not confirmed those, but wow, look at that wind pick up. This is the backside of the eye wall. We're only five miles from the center of the eye. The worst is still moving to our northeast. This is only the beginning of Ian, and it is frightening to watch the power of water do what it does, and I really hope that everyone is at a safe level, and we obviously are inside this room. Ears still popping. I cannot tell you how eerie that is to feel it. Uh, but that house now almost covered. It's broken out the windows and the doors, and that's usually when that sway happens. I've seen this so many times. That tilts and tilts, and then it'll get washed into the ocean. Ginger Z, just excellent David. reporting. You, along with Rob, uh, Victor, Gio, uh, Janae, Ginger, our thanks to you. Please, you and the crew, again, I say it often, but please stay safe for us. Uh, Ginger, describing, you know, when your ears pop. We've been in so many of these hurricanes. We know that's when the pressure is dropping. She is now about five miles uh, from the eye of this storm as it approaches west coast of Florida. The picture's right there live in the screen there. That is Fort Myers already feeling the impact of Hurricane Ian. And you heard from the uh, National the NOAA, the act, acting deputy director yeah, moments ago the saying years, the, right? the landfall is about to take place at any time now. Uh, we will continue to monitor this as soon as we see any uh, major downgrade in the situation there. Of course, we'll be back on the air. So again, our thanks to Ginger Z and the entire team on the ground in Florida. Our coverage will continue on ABC News Live all afternoon and on ABCNews.com as well. I'll be back throughout the afternoon when news warrants and a special edition of World News Tonight a bit later right here on this ABC station. I'm David Muir in New York. Good day.